Hey everybody, got an interesting project I got going on here. I'm putting bevels on my piston, okay? So I don't have to raise my transfer timing. Right now it's probably about 20 thousandths I took. And the uh, reason why is because this highway cylinder, I already know what's going to happen if I try to raise them transfers. It's going to be junk. These things ain't cheap for these 391s. So. And I know a lot of people were asking, how thin can you take, how thin can you take your ring land on to? Well, generally you want at least 70 thousandths from the top of your ring to your ring land. That's the minimum. Minimum. You probably want a little more than that, but uh, if you're using it as a work saw, there's a possibility that you can break this off. But uh, this one here is like 150,000, so I got a good bit of meat there to play with. Probably about 70,000, so I could take off and still be good. Not going to go that far, definitely. But uh, yeah, it's just general rule of thumb I've heard from a lot of saw porters. They said roughly you want 70,000, you know, your ring land thickness from here to top of your ring to the top of your piston. Also, got to keep in mind this pin, okay? So, you got pin, you don't want that too close. You might want to factor that in as well, measure from here to there, because you don't want that getting loose. It'll screw your saw up, okay? Just some tips there to look at. Yep, I don't know. This one here, I believe it or not, I took the time to actually time it. You won't believe it. this thing's got like 133 on my primary and 136 on my secondary. Man, that's way too much. And I've noticed from experience working on a few saws I worked on, I just keep at it till I get it, just for fun. But uh, I noticed the longer your transfer timing is, or the lower your transfers are, obviously the less duration you have. So that means the less fuel that can get into your cylinder. So it's like it's too lean on top end. Now there's some saws that are designed that way. So they got other things going on inside them, like different rod lengths and stuff like that. But uh, most of your saws, you run your transfer timing that long. I've noticed the carburetor will be very hard to tune and uh, you give her full throttle it's like it'll run really hot it'll you'll see the muffler start steaming that's why I did this little mod that I do for uh, letting heat out of the muffler and drill a hole and put this yep I did that on 372, man, that thing runs beautiful now. With that 272 piston, man, that thing's, that thing's a beast. You could wear safety goggles with that. Friggin' chips fly everywhere. <laughs> so I had trouble with yesterday on that video when I was running that. I'm like, damn, I couldn't run it too long. Pulling them noodles, it was like a blizzard of chips. I'm so happy that thing runs that good now. But yeah, I thought I'd give you that little tip there on uh, pistons. Um, right here, yeah, I got a motor I'm putting in my truck. Yeah, I'm a mechanic, so I can do all this stuff. I'm going to put, uh, I have timing chains here from another engine I had. They were new. I took them out and saved them from a long time ago, but... Uh, Yep, put timing chains in it. I know how to do all, I've been doing this stuff for 23 years. And the funny thing is, believe it or not, working on chainsaws is a whole different type of thing. In one aspect, they're simple, okay? But in another aspect, they're kind of more complicated than working on a car, believe it or not. You're getting into runnability issues like that flywheel. On that 372. Who would ever figure that flywheel was bad? Yep. But, uh, yep. 
So, okay, guys, until next time, keep on feeling the heat.